All right, everybody. Welcome to this Ocean Life podcast. Thanks for being here. I'm your host, Josh Peterson. Uh, last week when I was on Maui with my family, I had the opportunity of meeting uh, today's guest, Luke Adolfson. Uh, we spent some time on the water together spearfishing uh, with another local legend, Bobby Twitchell, who we just uh, released his podcast episode, the last one here. And so today I have Luke on. I had a lot of fun talking with this man of the water of Maui. Luke shares stories of surfing on Maui, surfing in the local WQS contest. His time over the past years pushing himself at Piaje. Jaws, the you know world famous big wave break. Some great stories from his time there, and dodging some big ones, getting some big ones. We hear of Luke's world travel, surfing in Indonesia, South Africa, and other places, with time spent helping those less fortunate with his missionary work to Uganda. Pretty rad story there. Luke shares his perspective on the youth of Maui today and the energy he and others in the community are putting into helping the kids stay focused on their goals in life and finding happiness on that beautiful, I'd call it paradise island. And Luke and I replayed that recent story of us diving together off into Pili with a close call with a boat and hear of Luke's pursuit of breath holding, apnea training, just a great perspective on life. So thanks for being here as always, supporting the podcast, minimizing our plastic, picking up some trash, doing good for others in the water and on land. Hope we're all getting out. It's almost end of August, summer's flying by, but that means for us in the Northern Hemisphere, some winter swells are coming. Anyway, hope everybody's doing good. Now, let's get into the ocean life of Luke Adolfson. So Luke, man, um, we were chatting this week and it was killer meeting you I, almost exactly a week ago on Maui. We went out for a dive with Bobby Twitchell, who I consider, I bet I'm thinking you might do too as a legend underwater. Um, but dude, so thanks for being here today and chatting with us. Yeah, man, my pleasure. It's really cool what you're doing with these podcasts. And I, I watched a couple of them, so it's really fun, entertaining. Yeah, no, that's great to hear, and I, I appreciate that for sure. So you had, you guys had a few days of waves this week, man. What, yeah. what were t- talk about that? How was it? Oh man, it wasn't as good as Tahiti, but uh, it, was <laughs> it was very nice. We got, you know, when it hits Tahiti first, it, get, it comes up and hits us about four days after, and we always get really excited because you see all these videos and photos of Tahiti and the trials are going on. So it was definitely covered. Yeah. Heavily on Tahiti, and uh, yeah, unfortunately, it wasn't Tahiti over here, but it was uh, definitely a fun uh, run of waves, and I surfed my brains out. <laughs> uh, that's rad. That's what. You, that's all you can really hope for is just enough swell to be able to say you surfed your brains out. So, on Maui, wh- like where were you? Where were you surfing? Was like Honolulu Bay, or where were you? Oh no, it's Southern Hemisphere swell. So yep, um, surf all of town in Lahaina. There's a couple of spots. Real fun for shortboarding and yeah. really just beautiful summer waves. Yep, yep, rad man, that's killer. And then, so how was the summer in general? Would you say for you guys with waves? We've had a unusually, like on average, it's, it's probably gone been an above average summer. It's uh, it's been surfable pretty much every day, which is really nice for a summer. Yeah. And, and uh, it's been overhead a lot. Huh. <laughs> I mean, I can't even count how many swells have been overhead. So it's really, really nice to have a summer that's, you know, a lot of activity going on in the Southern Hemisphere. And we've been reaping the benefits. It's been nice. Yeah, man, that's great, dude. And so, yeah, gosh, that's kind of neat. Like, you're able to see what's happening in Tahiti and know it's going to hit you guys a few days later. And so, so do you, like, you look at what's going on in Tahiti and – you can kind of gauge the size that will reach you a few days later and kind of know what to expect. Yeah, I'm still learning, but it's, uh, it's fun. And you, you get to you kind of get to be like your own weatherman because yeah. you, you start learning like surf line and different things. They all use pretty much the, the weather maps. Um, and they, they'll watch big storms and they'll watch the fetch of the storm and they'll watch just the energy of the storm and how 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 much the seas at where the storm is and whatnot and then uh they give like a little bit of a prediction and you can watch as the storm gets closer uh to see like how close it gets or how strong it stays or if it's going to dissipate or there's so many different variables that 
can make the swell uh, not really show up as big as people think or say right. it's going. Um, with this swell in Tahiti, unfortunately, it, I guess what a lot of my friends were saying is that it was a big localized storm. And so I got real close to uh, Tahiti when it, when it got to Tahiti, it dissipated rather than traveled all the way. And right. All the way and energy all the way up to that. So we still got a lot of energy, but it wasn't, um, it wasn't 10, 12 foot plus, you know? Right, <laughs> like you'd hope. <laughs> but yeah, so it's fun. Winter time is a lot more easy to predict because we have a lot more buoys. Right. So you can start watching the buoys, and it's there's a lot of tricks and like the period if it's like 22 seconds or versus 15, 16 seconds. Yeah. Makes a big difference in the prediction too. And yep. But. Yeah, all the big waves guys are getting it dialed in lockdown where, like, they almost know exactly when the biggest wave is going to be coming in that day. Yeah. And that's, uh, like, those guys that are trying to get the, um, you know, the big wave awards on WSL, they're watching those buoys like a hawk. Yeah. They know exactly when to paddle yeah. for that set because they know it's going to be the biggest set. Yeah, man, it's pretty rad. They're like basically like mini oceanographers or meteorolog meteorologists, <laughs> you know, looking at all the different variables. It's pretty rad and pinpointing, like you said, oh, like totally. the range totally. of hours in the day when it's supposed to peak and then yeah. being ready and not wasting their energy paddling out hours in advance, but like, you know, just really calling it down to like the hour. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, it's amazing what's behind uh, just this whole new push for paddling and surfing um you know like it it was a huge push for toe and surfing once toe and surfing got big it was like wow that's amazing and like there's so much they, those guys have so much fun but now that paddle surfing big wave paddle surfing has gotten huge and, yeah uh, that's like the new thing and so they're really pushing safety um most everyone i know that Search big waves is CPR first aid certified, and then yep. even guys that have done uh, marine, you know, water safety training, which is really uh, a little, just a, another a, a large step further than the first aid and CPR. And then right. there's a lot of apnea training going on with uh, breath holding and, and yep. a lot of push, a lot of different techniques for breath hold, and uh, it's really cool to hear a lot of different approaches you know some yeah. people really would want to hyperventilate before they have a big wipe out and some some just want to release that carbon dioxide that's in their lungs kind of like with spear fishing you know that yeah you know, spear fishing and and you calm your heart rate but then there's a big uh set coming down on you it's kind of hard to calm that heart rate sometimes so yeah man it is it's a challenge so i mean like kind of pinpointing you and just talking about big waves and where you're at i mean you've had some a few different a few seasons now at jaws piahi there in maui and talk about big waves and everything i mean and also diving as we as we kind of opened up that's how you know you and i met out diving in the water so i mean first of all i mean talk about your your days sort of as they evolve still like out at jaws and other i'm sure there's other maybe reefs out there that are you know certified like big waves type stuff i mean how did you get into it originally like do you remember your first kind of go out jaws and when was that and everything yeah it's, you know i'm trying to think what year it was i think it was four or five years ago and you know i just had this huge desire to surf Bayahi and all of a sudden um everything kind of lined up for me uh someone told me a patagonia connection and i got a nice inflation vest uh, I went ahead and bought, uh, you know, the impact vest, yeah. uh, you know, from Patagonia. And then there's also, uh, the, the payahi boards don't come cheap, but, uh, one of my friends gave me a deal, threw me a board and, uh, all of a sudden I was all ready and their only excuse was just not good doing it. So, uh, yes, that's right. Just, <laughs> you had no more excuses. <laughs> so I was like, well, I don't have any excuse to not do it now. So I, uh, I, you know, this next, the next swell came and it's hard. Uh, the hardest thing about 
Cirque du Soleil, I think, is finding good partners. The uh, Soleil, you know, and people that are dedicated to open up their schedule for, you know, huge waves. You know, when there's when there's big waves, the the temptation is you can surf anywhere <laughs> and right. the surf Soleil with like now there's 70, 80 plus guys out there, yeah. and then it's a massive wave. It's like I feel like it's like surfing pipe on crack. It's just like it's yep, I mean, people you, everywhere. Oh, people everywhere. Skis, photographers, helicopters, and there's everyone's trying to make a name for themselves out there, and it's kind of gotten a little bit too out of hand. But uh, you know, I I can't be. I'm part of the party, you know, so it's, uh, <laughs> it, it's definitely intense, uh, you know, there are a lot of attitudes and a lot of frustrations and a lot of people wanting to catch waves, and so you're battling, and you're battling for 20-plus foot waves, you know, yeah. so yeah. you're a lot of yeah. Dude. yourself in a lot of uh, situations that you probably wouldn't, so I like to say Bayahi, but it's, um, it has to be the right conditions. Like I don't like doing going on the the mega swells because that's usually when it's really really crowded too. Right. Um, and then the swells that are forecasted way far out as a big swell, usually those ones are the more crowded swells. Um, sometimes you can pick days off that you know are the end day or the beginning day when there's not as many people that want to surf it, and you can yeah there as many. Um, but there's a lot of other spots on Maui that are big wave surf spots, and you know you, you don't have to fight the cool like it's just like a contest crowd out there. So oh yeah, man, yeah no, it's it's that's a that's a that story you just told is like I'd say almost like chapter by chapter like here in santa cruz and mavericks you know not me not being a mavericks guy like mavericks guys having seen enough of it the same thing it's like a lot of dudes it's hectic and a lot of attitude and vibe and people are putting themselves in situations just to get that you probably shouldn't be you know um and so yeah there's a lot of other breaks like big wave i mean what is it like how would you characterize a big wave but other places to surf that are way less crowded that you can still get your adrenaline rush you know but I mean, that's just how it is nowadays, you know, I mean, I mean, but talk about like your first, like when you first got one, I mean, or what was that like? I mean, did you get a bag of big one? What was the one you first got, yeah. your first road? Well, my, my first day out there, we probably shouldn't have been out there. It was uh, me, Enrique, uh, Josh Totter, and <laughs> then Yuri came out on the ski later on. And, and there was, that was it. There's only three of us. It was the oh, day, wow. uh, where the Eddie ran, um, like like five years ago, and so that first day of the swell was um, it was only, I think it was only like a fourteen or fifteen second swell, yep. and you really want a you want a long period swell out there because the, the sets are more consistent. This was almost like a storm surf oh. <laughs> at like oh. <laughs> gigantic storm surf. So it was pretty messy out there, really hairy. The winds were not quite right but you know um those guys were ready and they got me all amped to go out and we all went out piled together and uh it was a great experience i caught four waves that day uh my first day or my first wave was uh real mellow real nice i was like wow that was fun and i made it all the way and i tried to you know like it was my first time surfing payout so like uh i i tried to man up and just go straight on it so i can yeah. really like see how big it was and then do a bottom turn and by the time i got to the bottom turn uh i got just swept off my feet but it wasn't <laughs> it, was, uh, it was fun though to just drop in all the way to the bottom and then look up at it and just be like wow dude and, that's uh, rad and uh then the next couple uh it was fun um the i think my last one was the biggest one it was, it was it's probably still the biggest in my life it was uh pushing probably 20 foot hawaiian and yeah it from this guy he only shot with his phone and we didn't really want to cover it you know I mean, it gets, it gets right. shot up. Okay, there weren't really anyone there wasn't anyone really filming that day because it was uh 
just a real storm surfy day. A lot of people scratched it. Yeah, right. And uh, but someone got a video of it, and it just it, I looked like a little ant. I was I was kind of no you know, way. I was like, on the bat, paddle myself like wow, that was a really fun time. But then in the middle of that time, uh, I remember. You know, like you're surfing these massive boards. My board is the board that I had then was a 10.7 bar board. It was uh, 10.7. This thing is like 10.7, but it's like six and a half, seven inches thick. Dude, it's like 30 pounds of board, probably. <laughs> it's like carrying it. You got to have some balls holding it. It's like so nasty. Yeah. And so uh, this freak set came in, and I remember. Uh, Josh uh, Totter was right there, uh, and he's like maybe another 30 yards, and I see him put his head down and start paddling, and I see the ski start, you know, Yuri, and he was on the ski doing towing, and uh, and he, they start shooting it out to the outside, and it's just like, you're really like, oh, shit. Like, you're like, oh, oh, no, this is not good. He's like, oh, shoot, you know? <laughs> you're like, oh, man. So we start howling out so fast and just put our head down and I didn't even want to look and feel like I was like so I could really get a handle on it, you know. I was trying to calm myself down and sure enough it was a pretty big set. Uh I don't I can't even put like a measurement on it. It's just yeah. hard when it's like that big and but it was one of the bigger sets that came in and uh I I was like I might be able to get over this thing and so and so I was pounding, 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 and then I realized I'm not going to make it. And so oh, I threw no. my board and swam under. And fortunately, like, it threw over me. Oh, and, yeah. But didn't, like, I wasn't in the impact zone. I was able to swim under it. But then my uh, board gave me a good ride. And so I got pulled <laughs> in, I'd say, like, 45 feet really fast. Wow. And, uh, and so then I got my board back and I started pounding because there's another one behind it. And I was, and it was a little smaller, but it's still like I was able to get back to where I was and a little further. So I was like, okay, well maybe instead of ditching my board this time in case there's a third one, yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'm going to try to push through the lip. <laughs> The duck dive it. Tuck dive a ten seven that six <laughs> is thick. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, I'd heard the try. I've never done this before. And so I I try to uh push through this lip like as it's like lipping over and I I don't know if it was like an angel or I don't know why I like what I was thinking of trying to push through this massive <laughs> lip. But I <laughs> Just through, like I'm pounding so hard, I'm going right at it as hard as I can. I'm like, okay, here we go, and I push through, and I get in over the lip somehow, and I pop up on the top of the wave, and then I just grab my board, and I all of a sudden feel like I'm going backwards, like at a hundred miles uh, an hour. And I'm like, oh, oh no. no! And my heart goes into my chest. I feel like I'm about to cry. <laughs> Because I'm about to get sucked over on this massive wave. And oh, my God. I was just like, oh, man, this is it. Uh, like, it's like. This is how it ends. <laughs> it's like, and so uh, somehow I I started going backwards so fast. And I was like, man, I'm going to I'm going to get sucked over. And for some reason, I don't know what happened. But when, like, I was just far in front of the wave that when it broke, that I didn't completely get sucked over. And I stayed on my board, and I kind of, wow. I did get wiped out, but I didn't, like, get yeah, thrown get over. Yeah, get buried. I and I just kind of got stuck in, like, this, like, the crack, sometimes we call it, where the, when the wave breaks, it'll bend over, but then, like, some energy pushes back out towards oh, yeah. the ocean. And I guess I got stuck in that, and man, I got, I was so relieved. <laughs> and, uh, but my heart was pounding after that. And, oh, uh, pounding. The super gnarly wipeout, and he ended up going in, and we just realized that it was just, yeah. I mean, 
a little too messy, a little too hairy. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. I remember looking into one wave out there and just being so in awe. And it was oh, being, dude, I bet. like this really weird storm surf to it. And it was darker, darker. You know how yeah. it's you went and say a bright, sunny day. Yeah. And even if it's not that big, it still looks kind of scary. And then, I mean, but then when you, when it's a big, dark, like, like overcast day. Oh, yeah. It's, it's ominous. Like really, really, really scary. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when, when I say when it's a bright, sunny day, it like almost looks inviting, you know, right. but when right. it's cloudy, yeah. It, the Add such a different danger. attitude to it. Yeah, no, it's true. It's like the danger factor is kind of masked by just the beauty of it all, you know. But then there's the days that are the other side of the coin, which is it's dangerous and it even looks dangerous, that dark gray, green, you know. And I mean, sometimes I just, I remark too, and I'm better about this than when I was younger, but like recognizing when the ocean is trying to tell me like, today's not a day meant for people to be out, <laughs> you know, and like, you know, when you're younger, it's like, Oh, I'm going. And like, sometimes you get your ass in it too and you, you barely make it back in. But now it's like, I just recognize, Hey, right now the signs are saying people sh should not be out here. <laughs> you know, if you're a person, you don't belong in the ocean. I don't care who you are. They're just not, it's not going to work out. <laughs> yeah. well, I'll, I'll never forget that visual. I had, I had this imprinted in my mind of this massive wave coming in and it almost like oh, man. had like a fist to it and when it threw over it was like it just had this the biggest barrel you could put it, it literally felt like you could fit a school bus a four yeah bus dude gnarly and i was just like holy cow that's so yeah it's just like that insane that's what really started for me i was like wow that yeah yeah. They're out there a handful of times. I, I would not say I'm like a payahi guy. Like there's so many payahi guys that mm -hmm. are out there that dedicate their lives to it. And it's right. really cool and I really suck those guys. And I I wanna get more into it, but I'm definitely not the regular guy out there and uh it's really yeah. cool to be those guys. Like right. The guys that have really dedicated their lives to it, like Fury, just amazing. And he's he's out there every day. And then Kyle Lenny, like this last year, just blew everyone away. Yeah. And it's cool to see their passion, that level of just adrenaline that they can harness, and but then go and push it the extra measure. You know. Yeah, like, man. Yeah, it's it's pretty special to see for sure, and that's pretty rad that you're right there and able to to get on it when you're able to, and then see that. I mean, see that whole story develop. I mean, Jaws has been a thing for a while, but like the last what four or five years, it's been really it's just blown up, just like kind of like it's big wave surfing global in general. Now it's a, it's a huge giant thing, you know. But I mean, part of your time too is. Like you're surfing on Maui, but you're traveling a lot. I mean, I'm I just looking at a clip of you and Nias and Indo and Sumatra just getting fully barreled. I mean, and you mentioned other places, Uganda. I mean, you've been around the world a bunch. South Africa, it's a big passion of yours. So talk about just the travel aspect to other places to go surf. I mean, um, how often do you go? And, you know, talk about some of the recent stuff you've been doing. You know, surfing is... Uh such a unique sport because it's a culture you know and i feel like a lot of a lot of sports carry this culture but surfing is you can go anywhere in the world and if you're with surfers you feel at home and it's really cool because you get to go surf australia or indonesia or philippines or south africa or tahiti and you might not like him at this this really nice little clint tahiti um his name is hero and man the hospitality in tahiti just it it taught me a whole different level of aloha and it wow. was uh it was just, just amazing you know these people 
will treat you like their their brother, they're like without even knowing you, and invite you in their home and cook you food and just like just show you their ways and you know it's just amazing the the love they have uh, over there and uh, so yeah like here though like I didn't really like you know he he speaks French and and Tahitian and I I speak English obviously and uh, so like it's not we our communication levels weren't very deep but uh, <laughs> we finally found ourselves like explaining things with our hands a lot and you know I almost felt like a caveman after hanging out yeah. with like, <laughs> like you know like yeah. <laughs> it's really funny actually so you know like every time we would talk. Uh, Hiro, like, we would say, you know, really talk really slow and be like, wave, power, me. Yeah. Or like, <laughs> like, hungry, Luke, hungry, anger, like, you know, like, you know, like, talk okay, to, man. like, this, like, strong word, like, in one word, so you can, like, you can, and kind of, like, use your hands to describe it. And so, after, after hanging out with him, and, you know, it's just, Totally being embarrassed in the culture, the Tahiti culture, and surfing with him a lot, and eating fish every day and whatnot. And it was time for us to move on in our journey. And uh, so I, I was taking back the rental car, and the, the, the surf straps, for some reason, they, they let water come in through the surf straps into the rental car. Oh, yeah. So the seats were soaked. Uh. <laughs> So I've taken this rental car back to like these really nice Tahiti, Tahiti people, and they were gonna charge me for the water again. So like the seats are wet, and I was like, you know, it was raining in Tahiti, and so when I was talking to them, I was talking like I was talking to Hero though, because uh. <laughs> you know, nonstop. I was like Tahiti, raining, wet. <laughs> so here I'm like this. This white guy is like this. Thought, I probably thought it was crazy, and then after yeah. the scratch in my head, I was like, "Oh, maybe that's why they didn't budge at all." I was talking like I was a caveman, but, right? Um, They're uh, pretty, like, "Dude, we speak English, man." <laughs> yeah, totally. Uh, it's just kind of a funny. I keep. I always think back, like laughing about that. Um, yeah, just, yeah. Fine. That's really rad, fun. man. Yeah, the traveling's killer. I mean, like you said, it, it's that community, global community of surfing, and there's a lot of others. I'd, I'd say almost every other water sport has that same sense of community, diving, spearfishing, fishing, et cetera. So, some communities by nature are more like embracing of, of kind of foreigners, other places coming in to, your, to fish with you or surf with you or dive with you, you know, and paddling, same, you know. But yeah, surfing's cool. It is. It's like... There's always egos. That's the nature of surfing. But there's so many pockets within within every place. Whether it's the most gnarliest Southern California or heavy pipe, wherever it is, like with where there can be a lot of egos. There's always the opposite, you know. And there's that community, you know. So it's rad that you've got to see. I mean, I mean, what about Uganda, man? What was it like there? What was the surf scene like there? Oh, it's not quite a surf scene. <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, so Uganda. <laughs> It was a mission trip I went over with the church and it, um, it was just amazing it was a, a, an incredible experience seeing the culture over there and um, it's just you know it's, I really recommend um, going to places where like you know underdeveloped countries that are struggling with uh, with poverty and with malnutrition and with uh, you know that pit, this really just barely surviving, barely right. making it. Because it's so humbling. It's really, really humbling to see that. Uh, it's really inspiring, too, to just give to these people. And just, like, you go to give, but then afterwards, you just feel like such, like, they gave you more than you gave them. Because yeah. they taught you, like, a contentment, like, a lot of people don't have in the States of just, being content with nothing, yeah. being thankful and happy. I mean, these little kids just are so happy over there. 
and they have nothing. Right, they don't have right. They don't have iPhones. And so it was definitely a, a wake-up call for me. Uh, and it was an amazing trip. I saw a lot of people get just mightily touched. Um, and it was really cool. Yeah, and then uh, we got, I turned it into a circuit, so I went down to uh, Jeffrey's Bay as well. Um, oh, I sick. There. And I met uh, some nice folks, and, or uh, some nice guys in Jeffrey's, and we ended up doing a surf trip or a road trip down to Cape Town and then back up. And, oh, man, like, South Africa has such a unique culture, too, behind it. And the, the South Africans are our legends over there. They, they're radical, you know, and yeah, really, yeah. really cool. Like, I could never met, I, I never ever thought I would be surfing with penguins out in the water down in Cape Town. Dude, but, that's uh, so rad. Pretty crazy, but pretty remarkable uh, to see the, the natural life over there, you know, and uh, yeah. Yeah, like, and in Uganda too, we got, or Northern, South Africa, we went to a, the Kruger National Park, and that's just cool. amazing. And mass development, and lions, zebra, hyenas, just like yeah, um, man. And their natural habitat, they do a really good job of keeping them protected and keeping them in a natural habitat where they're they're just totally doing their own thing, and you get to kind of drive on the roads carefully around and. Sometimes you'll see some animals and sometimes you won't, you know, but they're in their own natural habitat and eating and other animals and whatnot. So it's a real cool part, like your national park over there. But yeah. yeah. Yeah, man. No, that's killer. I mean, to see all that, there's like such bonuses beyond just finding good waves. It's the community, the people you meet, the culture, and then also just like the natural landscape, you know, and then that Kruger, I've heard it's insane i've never been it's again on my long list of <laughs> things to go do but part of what you're mentioning too is like you, you went out to uganda uh, on like on a, with with um, the church on a, like a mission trip but part of because part of your deal Luke, too is like giving back you know that's why you're out there but locally where you're at you know you you also give back to the local kids um you know the and i'm, I'm going to say this wrong because i because i didn't ask <laughs> how to pronounce it but the pomakai youth so first correct my enunciation of that of your of the group you're running but then talk about it man what you're doing with the kids there on maui yeah so it's kind of funny i'm thinking about rebranding the because we're going to uh, move forward and make it a 501c3 uh very shortly here and uh cool. we're really brainstorming what to get a name to rebrand it because you know the problem about the name is it's uh the Hawaiian name, but it's a tough one to say, and sometimes I'll even botch it up if I'm not focused, but it's a pomakai. Um, you got it. it. Yeah, it means, you know, I, it means a lot. It means lucky, blessed, you know, fortunate, um, but I really take, like, the blessed part out of it, um, you know, and and I, the whole mission for the program is to Two really blessed kids, um, more unfortunate kids, but even kids that just need a goal or a purpose or a focus in life, you know. And uh, yeah. Maui, uh, I don't know if you know this, but it's like one of the number one suicidal rates in the nation. And uh, the reason why is uh, everyone comes here to Maui to really enjoy the paradise and that they call this paradise and they come here to get away from maybe their hell and back home and uh so when kids care that like this is the best place in the world there's uh not a whole lot of hope so yeah so unfortunately uh there's kind of a lot of depression over here and uh it's it kind of stems back to like domestic problems or domestic abuse or you know it's pretty pricey over here to live uh, for a lot of people because you got yeah, yeah. Eight, three jobs or so but the the thing i i want to do with uh the youth group is to really kind of just teach these kids and create a culture of of realizing how blessed they are over here 
Mm. I, I, it might feel like hell if they're having, you know, domestic problems or whatnot. But to really just not take it for granted that they do live in a paradise, that they have some of the most, like, they have amazing opportunities over here that they can take with. And, you know, a life of hard knocks is started, it builds character more. It mm-hmm. builds, it builds a, a stronger man or a woman, you know, and, uh, you know, like, there's all these different quotes that I could quote about how, you know, when you face trials and tribulation, it's like testing and it's growing your perseverance and your character and stimulating you and it's making you better, a better person. And Or, you know, and there's like, <laughs> there's that song that's like, whatever doesn't kill me, just makes me stronger. You know? Yeah. You know, so it, it's getting their perspective of, of being a champion, of being yeah. a fighter, of, of having a goal, having a focus, knowing they're blessed, you know, these kids knowing that they're blessed. But then we also uh, want to bless these kids, and we want to we want to stoke them out. So we'll stoke them out with uh, gear, or sometimes we'll give them like gift certificates for surf shop, or we'll uh, we'll uh, we have this 4.0 program where if they get a 4.0 in uh, school, they'll get a brand new custom board, which is oh uh, rad. Yeah, super cool and had a bunch of kids you know bring their grades up so you know like I want to my big thing is seeing where the kids at some kids you know having a goal of a 4.0 is impossible and it's absolutely right. not going to ever happen to kids because they just don't have the discipline or the focus but you, you create small goals and just start teaching them how to create small goals and uh, it's amazing to see a lot of these kids turn their grades around from straight Fs to Cs and Bs to, and then even to 4.0s, you know? Right. And it starts with those small goals. It starts with that small motivation that, and just that, that they know they can do it. I mean, it's, a lot of them feel like they can't and it's, they just don't realize like these younger high school years are really going to set them up for life. They yeah. Just, well, push through, and they learn how to overcome things in these young years, and they'll be able to yeah. overcome them in their later years. I mean, yeah. I remember school being one of like as like kind of dreaded. I I didn't like high school very much, and it was it definitely I worked hard. I I was I went to school on the Big Island. I was a, I uh, was homeschooled all the way until my 10th grade, and then 11th and 12th year, I went to a small school in Hogoloa, and uh, the school was so small that my class was nine people, and so... No way. I, but, I, <laughs> you know, I was motivated and stimulated, and I was valedictorian of the class as student body president, and I just, you know, but look at me now, like, I'm not, I'm not walking out in any, like, uh, like, I didn't, I went to college, I got a really good, like, uh, I got a lot of help to go to college, so it was, uh, like, I ended up only having to pay, like, six grand a semester, but I just kind of found yeah. myself lacking the end goal, I, yeah. you know, when I, yeah. I ended up dropping out, and, and now seeing that, like, how much goals and purpose and focus are important, like, I feel like if I had a, a focus when I was in college, I'm not saying it was a bad thing to drop out, but I'm saying if I had, like, an end goal, I would have finished. But when yep. I was in high school, my goal was college. Right. Yeah. You know? And then when I got there, I was like, now yep. what? You know, now I what? I didn't really have a career goal. I didn't have, like, I didn't really know what I wanted yeah. to do. Life. And, you know, I started out with engineering and math and whatnot. And so... I guess what I'm trying to say is, uh, you know, realizing your goals and, and your dreams is so important. And mm. really, you can accomplish mm. anything. And, like, who would have ever thought <laughs> that we would be, you know, people would be flying to the moon until they were like, I want, until someone thought, I want to fly to the moon. Or even think about yeah. the right. 
who ever thought we'd be ever flying? And how many times did the Wright brothers fail and not fly? Yeah, man. And almost kill themselves. And, and <laughs> yeah. finally, you know, like, they succeeded. So, like, and they look at technology nowadays. I mean, the options are endless. And really, dreaming is huge. Dreaming and, and finding yourself and dreaming and what do you want to accomplish? What do you want to do? And anything is like fathomable. Anything you can do. And yeah. it's really important to not limit yourself. There are no limits. Everything is possible with dreams. Yeah, yeah. And I see too, like, what's important is uh, from what you're doing is not just sharing this perspective with these kids. But you're providing like a an adult uh, influence, you know, um, who can believe in them. Because because it's like you know you look at your own self and others, and it's like anybody can create a goal. But people really who are who believe in themselves, they believe in themselves usually because they've had somebody else who's believed in them, you know, beforehand. Um, and usually that's a family member, a parent, somebody like that, a mentor. And if you don't have that, and you're a 13 year old kid with unlimited potential you might not ever believe in yourself because you've never had anybody to believe in you but what you're doing with your group sounds like is you're providing that framework of hey here's what you could do in life and believe in your but also you're acting as an adult figure a mentor of sorts who is giving those kids inspiration to believe in themselves because you're believing in them you know i mean i think that's super 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 key you know if you don't get that from your family and if you don't get it from the community around you, you might not ever have it. And you might not be able to do what you could do, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's the truth, man. It's, that's totally it. And that's the big thing about, uh, our, the, the program is it's really being a part of kids' lives. It's yeah. not just throwing them boards or throwing them gear, but it's like the everyday walk with them and, you know, it's right now we don't have a huge group of kids or whatnot, but how many do you have now? Well, I would say right now we're focusing more on the Lahaina Luna surf team. Oh, cool! And, and there's uh, kids. You know, like it's it's hard to put a number to them because it's it, it, now it's such a small community. And yeah. West side is such a you saw how tight knit it is. You yeah. know, and so it, it's it's something about being that everyday light to them when you come in contact and yeah them. yeah like whenever you come in contact with them it's like walking with them and being like hey so how's it going where are you working what are you doing what are you, what's your focus and it like it's the work that was prior you know when they were in high school now they've graduated now they've moved on to you know working full-time or whatnot on the island and and but it's they still have that deep connection with you, whether we went to camp with them over, like we've done different camps going over to, uh, like, uh, in, like, we teamed up with uh, Young Life. Young Life is a big organization over here. Okay. And, uh, yeah. They'll do, they've taken 36, like, sometimes they'll take, like, 36 kids out to uh, uh, Woodley, which is a camp in Yuba City, and it's, it's just really fun. Uh these kids to this day will say it's the best week of their lives. Yeah, you know, that's rad. You get them off the rock, you get them, give them a new perspective. Right. You, you just have a blast with them, but then you get deep with them. You know, you share right. things. Your kids open up and they share things, and you know, you get to hear their struggles, but then you get to hear and give them like a a motivation and a stimulation to, to to overcome those struggles and it's it's really a cool camp um there's a lot of different things like where there's action and it shows them that like you know some of these kids are like, afraid of heights or afraid of yeah. what yeah. and so it's like ropes courses there's like a tower course there's uh there's like dune buggies there's, there's oh, gosh. the camp but yeah. like the ropes course and the towers course are kind of like for some of these kids really was like a wake up because they're not used to heights they're not used to being 
you know, 800, well, I would say it would be like 200 feet in, on this one ropes course. Pretty Yeah, pretty wow. High. Uh, really high um, ropes course. And so it was, uh, you know, like looking down, and it's like it almost gets blurry when you look down because it's so high. And that freaks these kids out. But like to overcome <laughs> that freak, you know, being freaked out, and that shows them that like to apply that and later on in life too, it's really cool. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So it's just building relationships with kids. Like, don't, like, and that's the thing is, uh, it, it, it is, it's just a small, it takes a village to raise a kid, you know, like uh, me doing a little work here or some of my friends doing work with kids in other parts or, you know, it's just everyone doing their part. Yeah. And see the positive influence. Too. Yeah, that are growing up right makes the biggest difference. Yeah, you know, makes the biggest difference. So it's really cool. Yeah, that's that's yeah, rad. Culture. Yeah, man, one hundred percent. I think that uh, I don't know. I honestly think that every every person, every adult has an um, an obligation to give something back to the next the next generation, whether it's doesn't matter if you're coaching baseball or helping somebody surf or taking them for a walk and just chatting doesn't matter for there's a million different ways to do that because i think the kids of today have it they're just it's tough i think it's tougher for them than it ever was for me my generation probably yours you know it's it's like you could somebody could listen to this and go what how could they possibly be depressed on maui it's the most epic place on earth but it's different man they you know they, they they their take on reality is like based on what they see on commercials and the phone and Instagram and social, it's, dude, it's hard. You know, I get it. I can see how they'd be depressed because they, they don't have all these things. They have this beautiful natural environment, but if somebody's not there helping them to see the beauty around them, they might not ever see it. And so the depression and that just leads to, you know, bad places. So how, doing what you guys are doing is just, I mean, I just admire you for doing that and taking your own time. You know, I think that's, that's just, it's awesome, man. You know, and then kind of tied to that, you know, is and back to the water as well is, um, I mean, diving in your own time underwater. I mean, part of what you guys do with the group, are you getting any kids sort of free diving or snorkeling, exposing them to, you know, the, the waters of Maui, you know, underwater like that? You know, for me, I, I kind of just started really getting into spearfishing and getting really comfortable with it uh, recently. Uh, Bobby definitely has been... Uh, bringing kids out since from a long time ago, and and he he does cool. amazing work with kids too, and it's really cool uh, for me. Like I'm still getting kind of comfortable, kind of just tag along with Bobby and having fun with him and stuff. So I haven't really explored to take kids out. Uh, like what we did is more deeper depths and whatnot, right. but or like spear fishing like three pronging yeah i mean that's that's just kind of like another right. thing that people love to do and yeah fun. uh the biggest thing that i've really found to do is just you know take them surfing surfing or adventures there's so many really fun yeah peaks and trails over here and like the best thing about trails and and hiking is like you, you know like car time on the way to the trail or uh the on the like eating after or before something about sharing a meal with the kids and and just like stoking them out with some food and they they open up a lot more and then oh when you bring them out like on a trail like you experience these like this amazing beauty this amazing peacefulness and just getting out in nature in the world it's it it does a lot for your soul and it's yeah and you get to have really good conversations out there too of just being thankful for that right. and exploring it. So that's I definitely want to get bring them out spear fishing, but you know, it's like getting out the gear. And yeah. All that. Oh yeah. It's that's the challenge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean yeah, I know. I it's hard suit, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. That's the thing. You need all the gear for sure. But it was pretty rad. Like I really enjoyed 
diving with you and Bobby, you know, and I know you heard, you know, my, Bobby's podcast episode and we opened up with our boat incident, you know, and, you know, for folks listening, you heard the Bobby, you know, Bobby's when we opened up there. I mean, the, the, the yelling that woke us up from our just kind of meditative kick where our heads down and not seeing was, was you Luke like yelling. And like Bobby said, I thought it was a shark too, you know, but you know, I was kind of replaying that whole episode and like, really like, God, man, thank goodness, Luke, you were either more aware than I was or maybe Bobby too of what was going on top side, or you just happened to poke your head up at the right time, man, because <laughs> we, we had no idea that boat was coming and then, and Bobby was, he was right in the path of it. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I guess like the last time I dove with Bobby out there, uh, I I kind of stored in my heart like uh, there was a boat that went inside of us and I popped my head up and I didn't see them until they were going by and they were far away from us. Yeah. But the thing that hit me is I didn't know they were there and uh, right. I was like, well, what if they didn't know I was there? Right. And so I stored that in my heart. And even though they were far, there's no, nothing like what we experienced. It, I put it in my heart, like, wow, like, if I didn't know they were there, they didn't know I was there, this could have been bad, you know? Yeah. And it, I, yeah. I learned from it right there. And so I was popping my head up a bunch. When oh, I was right on. The other day, just because I knew that spot is a, it's more of a traverse spot with the blue the tourist boats going up to the bay and whatnot and so i was just like this isn't like where we usually dive you know and a lot of right i where there's no boats nothing you know and so you can relax you can kind of just not have to worry about any traffic but unfortunately uh that spot does have a little <laughs> bit of traffic and uh we almost yeah. got killed <laughs> bobby, bobby was like five feet from that boat that dude crazy. I know. I was thinking, like, it's funny, like, it's one of those moments, just like when you described trying to punch through that big wave at, at Peahi, time kind of stands still. Looking back on it, you can kind of replay it in your mind, and I can replay that, like, that, that time stood still when I heard your voice, I looked up, and immediately, like, it's like, it's time stopped, and it's like, okay, boat here, you can see it's flying fast, Bobby's there, I'm here, and I just, like, had this, like, okay, I think I'm okay based on the line of the boat. Bobby, maybe not. Unfortunately, he popped his head up at the, just right after I did saw it. But what I realized was if that guy who doesn't see us just, and you were going that fast on a boat, it's like a surfboard. If you just do a small turn, you, it goes quick, right? It's not like the slow loping turn where I'm like, dude, if this guy doesn't see us and maybe dodges a turtle or I don't know what, just drops his phone and, turns the wheel just a, just a hair, <laughs> we're going to get mowed down, you know? There's like this, okay, let's hope that doesn't happen because that guy's too close to even really dive under it now, you know? Unfortunately, to, I mean, Bobby stopped and the boat went by us, but, dude, it was, it was a sketchy one. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely sketchy. Our hearts were pumping and our fish were waving at the boat. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah, no, it was, a, it was a good time with you, like, so cool part about that dive is the dolphins. The dolphins were just insane. Uh, I know. Getting so close and just like playing with uh, us. So yeah. Like, it's really cool. That was special, man. That was really special. <laughs> yeah. So, so then Luke, man, so dive surfing, you're helping kids. I mean, you're diving. I mean, what's kind of next? I mean, what's like, you know, we're kind of more than halfway through this year and you know, we're going to get some winter swells here coming pretty soon. I mean, what what's next for you, man? Any big plans or trips or, or goals? Yes, um, I'm getting ready. I'm leaving on the 30th to go to Indonesia. There's a little contest over in Neos, so a three-star right. QS contest. And, uh, yeah, I, I kind of realized I have goals of myself and dreams of myself is to actually – compete in contests and have fun with it and uh get in like the hawaii events and great uh, there's the triple crown the hic and the vulcan pipe pro and so i've never surfed in the triple crown i surfed the hic last year and the for the first time and i i was really fortunate i won my first heat there and it was just felt God. felt like i accomplished a goal you know and a dream and so you know, I'm just having fun with it. I'm not trying to real, win a world title or anything, but 
it, it is something that I realized that I had in my heart, like as a kid, that I kind of was pushed away from of yep. being a pro surfer. And you know, yep. a lot of my I surfed every day when I was a kid, but I was kind of more uh, encouraged to go like the high school, college, career yep. route. But you know, look at sure. me now. I'm, I'm teaching surf lessons. I'm working at a restaurant, but I'm loving my life. I, yeah, I travel around. I get to surf every day, and I. You know, I'm, I I really feel like I'm living my own dream, and uh, that's uh, awesome. really cool. So I'm gonna go to Neos, and uh, the waves look like they're gonna be pumping, and I got all my boards ready. I'm really excited, and uh, hopefully I'll uh, make it through enough heats to get into the HIC and and the Vulcan Pipe Pro, and maybe the Triple Crown. So sick, really fun to to uh, do that all again this year, and so that's Dude. some goals. Also. We got some goals to surf Ahi again, and uh, you know, lining up water safety is really important for uh, Peahi is having a ski to watch you. A lot of right. people are out, out there without skis, and so it's putting a lot of other people in danger because yeah. if they're in danger, and someone's not going to just watch them die; they're going to go rescue them. But that that means someone doesn't have a partner anymore. Someone doesn't have eyes on them anymore. So. It's a uh, it's a real important thing to have a ski just for yourself out there. Um, yeah, yeah. Even you know, like I'm doing it for the love. I'm not trying to go. It's just for fun for me. But you know, I don't want to put anyone in harm's way. If I ended up for some reason hitting my head really hard, or yeah. getting in a sticky scenario it can happen out there really fast. And I wouldn't want to ever put anyone else in my harm or in harm's way because I was being rescued by their partner. Yeah, right. And they needed it. Yeah. So, but yeah. So, really excited. Good deal. Season. Really excited for the contest. And uh, hopefully, hopefully, you can get some results. Cool. Oh, dude. Well, that's awesome, man. It's all good stuff. And I wish you the best of luck with all of that, man. And, Dude, Nia sounds rad. Dude, that's going to be fun. And I, already, I saw some video of you on Instagram surfing it. So it kind of looks like you've already been down there and you, you know what's, what to expect, man. So, dude, best of luck and all of that to you, Luke. Thanks. Thanks. Really appreciate it. I'm going to need it. <laughs> <laughs> rad, man. And if you're, of course, ever out in Cali for California for a contest or a trip or whatever, man, and want to come get – want to freeze in the Northern California water or take a crack at Mavs or something, let me know. I'm here and would love to have you. Yeah, man. That's actually been a, a dream of mine too. It's just, you know, kind of let everything work themselves out, you know, like uh, the opportunities and, you know, you offering that opportunity is a, a big step. So just Fully. coordinating a ski out there and all that would be yeah. huge and, and watching for swell season. But, um, yeah yeah sweet sweet man well dude good luck with all that and thanks for taking your time today and, and sharing all this rad stuff and again and beyond all that man thanks for putting your own time that could be spent doing other things you know towards the kids and everything i mean that's that's just rad and we need more of that in the world in general <laughs> so thank you for that man yeah it's a pleasure man it definitely keeps me me my head on straight you know, yeah. and, uh, having being accountable to the kids and having, yeah. you know, wanting to make a difference in their lives helps me make a difference in my life, you know? Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Right on, Luke. Well, hey, this has been awesome, dude. And uh, thanks again, man. And we'll chat with you soon. Yeah, thanks, man. Have a great day. Okay, thanks. Sure. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for listening uh, to another podcast episode. I can't do it without you and uh, so thrilled to have you here supporting uh, myself and the podcast and all the guests uh, continually. Always appreciate a positive um, rating on your, uh, your podcast app, whether it be you know Apple Podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, you name it. just helps, helps gr- grow the podcast and uh, spread awareness. So thanks for that. And then any uh, social media mentions, always super appreciative. And uh, if you know somebody who you think would be great to have on the podcast to share the, about their ocean life, please hit me up. I'd love to chat with them. Or if you think you'd like to, let me know. Uh, email is josh at thisoceanlife.tv. 
All right. Thanks, guys.